So for those who don't remember, Lauren Southern was on the great replacement tip with Stephen Molyneux way back in the day. Like, I want to say it was around 2016. Like, Lauren Southern is an old head in the, the kind of alt-right, borderline white nationalist space. Does promoting marriage and motherhood inevitably make women easy targets for subordinate status, increased vulnerability, and a return to second-class status? One of the very first columns I wrote at Unheard back in 2019 described how, for me, becoming a mom meant giving up on a great deal of the liberal ideology I embraced when younger because it was impossible to square with the embodied reality of caring for a baby. A relatively conventional home life turned out to be much more fulfilling than the radical one I'd adopted with my progressive politics. Here we have, this This is a, a big thing that conservatives like to harp on and, and this kind of vaguely anti-feminist space that they like to occupy where they will talk about how modern like feminist ideology has made women not want to be moms or not want to work at home and not be housewives. Almost nobody is actually saying that. Like, it's, it is one of these things they've made up almost entirely whole cloth. Not, now, I'm not saying that there hasn't been, because I'm sure they would point to some Harvard professor or somebody who gave a TEDx talk one time about how, oh, this is, feminism is hurtful for this. And they're going to take those words out of context to be like, ah, see, look, this is what the entire liberal establishment thinks. But by and large, most people don't actually think or approach their issues or the world that way. I know plenty of people who have started families and stuff. Like, that's, that's not for me. I haven't done it. Oh, hello. We have a guest. We have a special guest star, everybody. Say hello, guest star. You smell like cat food. Gross. Hello. Hello, baby. I love you. Yeah. You want to speak into the mic? Do you have things to say? Share your wisdom? No. I love you. Okay. Like, it's, it's just not... It, it, it is not a tangible reality that this is this is something that women are being forced into. If, if you want to... Hello, cat. Hello. She's bumping head bumps. You want bumps? Is that what you want? If that's how you want to spend your life, you want to raise a, a kid and be a stay-at-home mom and a family, I fully think you should be able to fucking do that and nobody should try and stop you. But trying to do it, like, like, if that is what you truly want, that is completely fine. I do not care. But trying to live your life like that, and not only live your life like that, but bring other people's lives into it when there are other people, like, a child getting involved as a kind of political statement I think is incredibly fucked up. Why are you, why are you giving me bumps like this? Hello, little baby. And that whining isn't isn't the cat. The whining is the dog. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. You're so cute. You're so fluffy. Ah, cat, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> You're being such a little weird booger. What is your damage? Huh? She's so purry right now. Give give purr. Purr into Mike. You are so happy right now. Goodness gracious, Katie. So let's get back to now after we've done with this brief cat interlude. My accounts of questioning this individualistic ideology and embracing marriage and motherhood have resonated with social conservatives. Most of these, it goes without saying, feel as I do that family life and women's distinctive sex realities should be better understood and valued in the public conversation. Which is like, like here, here's the thing is when you get down to so many of these, these arguments is that essentially that is not a unfeminist perspective. Now, putting sex realities that is kind of a, a warning phrase and putting that at the forefront of what a woman's identity is and has to be in society that's not great that's not great but by and large like realizing the distinctive issues that women have to go through and the differences between those issues and other people isn't a bad thing and that is 
a progressive lens, even if they don't view it that way. And, and they, they don't, they view it through a, a, a skewed version of that lens, but we'll talk to that. We'll talk about that in a second. Some though take more hardline positions that women should never work, for example, that we should always be submissive or that, or even that women's right to vote should be repealed. This is what we see from um, uh, just pearly things and from a lot of the, the stuff that we've watched for hate churches. Because like a, a sect of radical modern evangelicals will be like, okay, women only need to stay in the home. They shouldn't work jobs. That's evil and worldly. Um, women were given certain like rules that they need to, to live by. And those are though, that is why we're seeing those kind of um, things come back. But surely any stance which risks lending momentum to such extreme arguments cannot be in women's interest. You'd think... I explored this question recently with the Canadian right-wing firebrand Lauren Southern, whose early video content regularly challenged liberal feminist orthodoxy and promoted domesticity. Our stories are symmetrical in some respects. Both of us em embraced radical politics in our early 20s, me on the left and Southern on the right. Both of us embraced the ideologies that felt inspiring in the free-floating world of the internet. And both of us, albeit in different ways, have course-corrected back toward reality in part via the fiercely practical experience of caring for a child. Southern story might easily serve as a cautionary tale for how social conservative talking points can lead women into danger. For where I lost my 20s to commune life and niche sexualities, she left media at 22 to embrace a socially conservative template for women. The lifestyle often idealized by social media influencers as trad wife. Except it wasn't all 50s pinafores and cute cupcakes, it was a living hell. And I'm, I'm sorry I'm smiling as I do this, but as I'm reading this, because it, it's it's not funny that like her her life was upended over the shit. But like I I, I don't know what you ex like this is this is the the leopards eating people's faces party. Like people warned you. People stood against you for years because they said that the people you like and the people you agree with are hurting women. They are, they are doing bad things to women. And then you willfully ignore that. And not only ignore that, but you perpetuate that ideology. You spread it to others. You encourage others to take part in it. Only for you to find out that, oh shit, you were wrong the whole time. It's really hard to not like feel a little bit smug about it. Nor has she learned that she was the only conservative woman in this position. Comparing our experiences, though, two things emerge. Firstly, that this is not simply a matter of the right being uniquely toxic for women, though, as Southern Story reveals, there's plenty of scope for toxicity. It's rather that purist ideologies as such map at best uneasily onto the practical realities of life as a woman, and especially as a mother. And especially, or, and secondly, that the simplifying, polarizing incentives baked into the contemporary internet are increasingly warping the ideologies of both left and right into such extreme forms that any sincere effort to apply these in real life will almost inevitably be the stuff of nightmares. I, I feel like there is much more of an effort to push on the right wing this kind of trad movement than there is for, I, I guess she's kind of, the, the writer of the article's kind of positioning uh, like hippie commune, multi-gender, like that style of living as the thing the left is pushing. But like, I see people actively advocating for trad wives. And saying that that's the way women... I've, I've literally... I know people who want to do that kind of commune life. But I've never seen it online. So I don't, I don't know if that's like really a fair comparison. Southern was perhaps the most telegenic figure in the brash, young, and very online alt-right movement, which emerged in the 2010s, quickly gaining international notoriety for her views on mass immigration, Islam, radically motivated farm murders in South Africa, and the or racially motivated farm murders in South Africa and the supposed harms of liberal feminism. Content that saw her accused by the radical left wing Southern Poverty Law Center. I don't, I don't, again, I don't like how you're calling the Southern Poverty Law Center radical left wing of racist dog whistling and even hovering at the precipice of outright white nationalism. Yeah, well, she was. Southern herself has always denied this, but hasn't stopped her critics on the left accusing her of far right agitation. Abruptly, she disappeared in 2019 to embrace marriage and motherhood in her husband's home country of Australia. She was, it seemed, all set to embrace the nurturing feminine domestic role promoted by right-wing traditionalists, idealized by trad wife influencers, and criticized by progressives as dangerous and stupid. I mean, like, again, I don't, I think this is a little bit of a blanket statement, 
Like, if, again, if you want to live at home and take care of a kid and, like, you, you live in a way that your husband can totally provide for your needs and that's what you want to do, you want to be a homemaker, who fucking cares? Like, honestly, who gives a shit? Progressives who would kind of deride this and call it dangerous and stupid, there's good reasons, and I'm willing to bet we're going to find out some of them in here. Four years later, though, Southern has caused a new round of shockwaves, this time with a video recounting what happened next. The breakdown of her abusive marriage, her return to Canada as a single mother, and a stint living hand-to-mouth in a cabin in the woods. Jesus Christ. And, well, because here's the thing. Is, and you kind of saw this with Steven Crowder and his messy divorce, is when you have this culture that basically demands subservience from women, a lot of women don't understand, or at least in, in these spaces, they don't understand that that means that the men want them to essentially live as slaves. They want them to clean up after them, to take care of everything in the house, to have no real personality, to give them sex when asked for. Like, they, they view them as entitlements, not as people, not as partners. And that is a crushing reality for a lot of people to come down to, especially after already marrying and learning this about somebody. It's another one of the things that you don't want to, like, it. it's another problem that arises from a lot of, um, like, modern Christian and purity culture, where you might, and this is, this is something that has been forever, that you might be sexually incompatible with somebody. And if you are in a monogamous relationship and trying to live by that, that could be a real problem. That's how you have marriages where somebody goes and cheats. That's how you have marriages where people stay like in the closet as gay or trans or whatever for 20, 30 years. Because they, they lock themselves into these tiny little boxes because it's like, okay, well, I'm married now. This is what I have to do. Um, Southern has attracted vitriolic criticism from the right for speaking openly about how trad life went wrong for her. See, again, like, because they, they, honey, they never saw you as a person. Like, they saw you as a figurehead, as an ideal, but never as a person, never as somebody with actual feelings. She, however, sees speaking out not as a betrayal of her own side, but as continuous with her, uh, earlier willingness to challenge progressive consensus on topics such as immigration. Quote, I'm not worried about saying the things I'm saying right now that are getting me so attacked online because I've dealt with this with South Africa. I've dealt with this with mass immigration. I've dealt with this with my critiques of feminism and every single one turned out, oh, maybe she was on to something. Honey, that... You don't see how this is the opposite of your criticism of feminism. Like, I... Okay. Four, she tells me she's not alone. She tells me she knows many other women still suffering in unhappy trad life marriages. Well, one of her WhatsApp groups, she says, is like the underground railroad for women in the conservative movement. Jesus Christ. Some of these are prominent media figures. There are a lot of influencers who are not in good relationships, who are still portraying happy marriage publicly and bashing people for not uh, being married while being in horrendous relationships. She hopes that in speaking out, she can reassure all these women who are thinking in their heads, I'm uniquely terrible and I'm uniquely making a mistake, that no, something is generally more amiss. What then is amiss? In her view, it's not that conservatism as such is fundamentally mistaken or that complementary sex roles are unworkable, but the online trad life ideology has distilled a version of these roles that's both rigid and wildly oversimplified and thus woefully ill-equipped for real life in ways that pose significant risks for women in such marriages. How then? did Southern get from posting videos titled Why I Am Not a Feminist to defending women's sex-specific interests within family life? This is, after all, not a million miles from what used to be called feminism. It's long. It's a long and bitter story in which Southern did her best to pr live a purist internet ideology to the letter, only to receive a grim object lesson in its shortcomings. By the time she met her husband, she'd been condensing conservative values into listical form as a media influencer for some years, which just goes back to, like, never trust people who write listicles to the point where it seemed possible to realize this framework in real life, too. So when marriage beckoned at 22, she tells me, Riley, I thought I'd won the lottery. They were married within four months. Good God, honey. Four months is fucking, that's, that's too, that's not enough time to know somebody. Like, especially, that's another thing. Like, you don't really know somebody unless you've lived with them. Because, like, somebody's habit, like getting to know somebody through living with them is an entirely separate deal. 
Um, that's that's rough. Oof. They were married within four months, arguably the equivalent for the right of my left-wing embrace of communes, anti-capitalist demos, and niche sexual subcultures. She was quickly pregnant. I don't think that's the same at all. Like, that's not, that, like, that really isn't the same. That is not the same. Like, going to a commune is, is a extreme edge case where, like, people on the left get married and get pregnant at a young age. Like, that is a, that is such a weird she keeps harping on this similarity between them, but they really, that's not the same at all. There were warning signs from early on. Quote, if I ever disagreed with him in any capacity, he'd just disappear for days at a time. I remember there were nights where he'd call me worthless and pathetic, then get in his car and leave. Jesus, what an asshole. Uh, but she didn't see them thanks to the simplified anti-feminist ideology she'd absorbed and promoted. I had this de delusional view of relationships that only women could be the ones to make or break them and men can do no wrong. See, this is, this is the other side of... Also, when you hear conservatives talk about how, like, oh, uh, progressives want to denigrate masculinity and make it seem like everybody is is against traditional masculinity and toxic masculinity isn't isn't a real thing, it's like, no, this is this is the kind of shit that toxic masculinity is meant to address. And when you aren't addressing this, you're letting it flourish, you're letting it fester, and actually like tangibly harm people. She didn't spot the red flags even as they grew more extreme. He'd lock me out of the house. I remember having to knock on the neighbor's door on rainy nights because he'd get upset and drive off without unlocking the house. It was very strange to go from being this public figure on stage with people clapping to the girl crying, knocking on someone's door with no home to get into, being abandoned with a baby. What the fuck? Even, like, and I'm, if, if this dude did all this shit, I'm almost positive, like, he was probably physically abusive as well. Um, even by asshole standards, this dude seems like an all-timer already. He also insisted she should publicly quit work. His work required a high level of government security clearance. She was a right-wing provocateur who had faced deplatforming state investigations and was even banned from entering the UK. In their early giddy romance, this had felt manageable. But when we moved back to Australia, he really wanted to get back into his old work. And Southern was a hardcore liability, so the pressure was on. It was like, Lauren, you got to hire lawyers. You've got to disavow everything. You've got to never talk publicly again. Again, the kind of thing you think you think would be a, a talking point before you get that far in a relationship, but I guess not. Oh, 2019, she left. That tracks. I like that's the one of the reasons why nobody's heard about Lauren Southern for like years at this point. Then, thousands of miles from friends and family, she reports becoming the closest thing to a modern-day Western slave. With no income of her own, she had to do everything. The lawns, the house, cooking, baby care, his university homework. And I didn't know anyone. I didn't have any support. There was no help changing diapers. There was no help waking up in the night with the baby. I'd still have to get up to make breakfast before work. I'd be shaking and nervous for fear I'm going to get yelled at. Fuck, man. As horrible as a person as she is, I am glad she's speaking out about this. Because this is... Like... When you hear Nick Fuentes or John Doyle or any of these little incel basement dwelling dweebs talk about what they want in a woman, what they want in a mate, this is the ideal for them. Like, I, I need people to understand, this isn't an edge case. As, as obviously, if she's in a, in a network with other women who are talking about it, this is what they want. Like... The, the trad wife aesthetic has become kind of this cutesified, like there, there was that Mormon um, influencer a while ago who's doing like cooking videos or she's in cute little 1950s dresses. And again, that version of it, totally fine, whatever. If you want to just dress up in, in cute little frocks and you have a husband who loves and supports you, because I'm sure, I'm sure that not every situation is like this. Like statistically, it just can't be. There has to be Women out there with their cute little trad dresses who stay at home raising two little cherubic children and they're, they're, the man of the house goes and works all day and brings home the bacon and they all sit around a table. I am sure somewhere out there, there is some family living that dream right now. And I, if, if everybody is happy, I wish the best for them. Like, via con Dios, whatever. But this is the reality of pushing that kind of lifestyle as a political ideology. 
rather than a mutual agreement between partners that that is how you both want to live your lives, that you both understand and respect your wants and needs, that you're both able to work symbiotically to meet those needs. Because that's, that's how marriage works. It is a partnership. What, what this kind of man wants is not a partnership. It is, it's a, it's a bang made. Yeah, Lexi Darling, uh, some trad wives are more like cosplayers grifting for incel clicks. Yeah, it's, it's become this weird, like, pocket internet ecosystem of, like, it, it is, it is kind of like porn. Almost in a way like you saw it you saw it with the uh, the classically Abby stuff where like everybody knows Ben Shapiro's sister classically Abby did some like uh, God, what was it? What was the the title of her series called like? Classic classic living or, or something like that where it was just basically all about being a, a classical woman um, And she got a lot of clicks like don't like I, I think it's very weird how people have fetishized her just because she has like pretty she has sizable assets. Like I don't, I don't know how how we're gonna say it. Like she is naturally very endowed. Like she just is. Like she has big boobs. But I know for a fact that she knows that, and she used that to uh, help further her her kind of platform. And like, hey, whatever. Again, if that's what you want to do, if you want to use those assets to your advantage, God be with you. But I'm tired of people acting like that is any different from porn. Because when in reality, it is. It is a fantasy of a woman that appeals primarily to cis-hetero men. Like, oh my gosh, I can get a wife like that. Like a wife that cooks and cleans and looks like that? Come on. Like, and people might be like, oh, well, it's not the same because they're, like, she's not naked and she's not devaluing herself. If you are advertising yourself like that, in in this kind of trad wife space, and, and this is this is gonna sound like I'm saying, oh well, she's asking for it. I'm not saying that at all. But you have to know that people are going to be view you as an ideal of what that could look like. And that's that's what I'm saying. And like the the thing with Abby Shapiro is like Abby Shapiro is like like she's pretty in a very basic way, but the way people on the left, I've also seen people being very disgusting about her is just fucking gross. Yeah, Lexi Darling, I'm okay with it as a kink thing, uh, but you have to break the kink kayfabe sometimes or else people will take it as reality. Yeah, well, and that's the thing is that they don't they don't want to. They, they want to push it as, as like an ideal, um, which is a problem. But like, again, if, if that's the life you want to live, whatever. You know, it's it's like there's there's an entire kink out there based around, uh, and they they do it for porn too, based around free quote unquote free use, and this this ties very into um, those kind of like housewife stuff. And free use is basically like a genre of porn where somebody will just be like cleaning dishes or whatever, and somebody can come up and just fuck them, or or they'll be like folding laundry or whatever, and then they'll just keep doing that thing with the fantasy being that you can just, as generally speaking, that you as a man can just use somebody, like literally just use their body to get off and then go about your day. And that ties so closely into so many of these narratives about trad wife and trad living. Now, the people who make those videos the people who engage in that kind of play as a kink, whatever, fine. It's consensual, who cares? That's honestly, on the list of kinks, that is not even really that weird. Like, who cares? If, if you enjoy that, I, I think that is maybe one of the most harmless kinks in the world. The problem is that I think so many men genuinely expect that kind of treatment. When they are brought up hearing like, like the shit we hear in the hate church all the time about how women need to be subservient to men, how they need to fulfill sexual desires. We've talked about how Prager you in the past has been like, oh, even if, even if, uh, or Dennis Prager in the past has been like, even if a woman isn't in the mood for sex, she should still try and put out 
because the man it, it's the man wants it and it's like when men grow up hearing that kind of shit they feel entitled to it and this is the kind of asshole that that entitlement breeds when you when you spend a man's entire life saying oh there's nothing wrong with being toxically masculine you are entitled to a woman's body uh, a wife should do everything for you like this is the kind of emotionally stunted man child that ruins their own homes that ruins the life of their children and the the women that they supposedly love love enough to marry i was told daily that i was worthless pathetic dead weight all you do is sit around and take care of the baby and do chores when covid shut down all real world public life her situation became hell on earth it was she said the only time in my life where i idealized dying god damn Instead, between the lockdown claustrophobia and her husband's behavior, she began to revise her initial willingness to leave public life. In part, she told me she hoped it would win back his love. He was so much kinder, sweeter, and more pursuant to me, and I was his boss babe. <sighs> it seemed like becoming a mother made him lose respect for me. Men love you more when you stop working and become a wife and mother. In her experience, though, this was very much not the case. Never mind the pop anti-feminist ideal of breadwinning husband and homemaking wife that Southern had once promoted. The freedoms for women to work and have interests outside the home turned out to be a lifeline. Those already inclined to dislike Southern's politics might feel a certain vindictive satisfaction at this collision of ideology with reality, but arguably, and having taken so long to see the potential downsides of her own anti-feminism, Southern simply shared the same blind spots as much of the mainstream left and right. It is surely true that conservative advocates Advocacy for complementary sex roles sometimes ignores questions about women's physical vulnerability and the scope this affords for domestic abuse. Yeah. Conversely, today, many self-identified liberal feminists have for also forgotten that the earliest women's movement was grounded in the sex-specific material vulnerabilities Southern experienced firsthand. The magazine pop feminism I internalized in 90s Britain seemed less concerned with such gritty realities than more nebulous goods such as empowerment, representation, and smashing stereotypes. Which, th those aren't bad things either. Like, th it was, like, it, it became more fixated on that because the other stuff was already, like, kind of fought and won. By the time Southern made her first viral video denouncing feminism, this was still more pronounced and joined by even more, uh, by the even more disembodied ideology of gender identity. Oh, great. So this is probably a turf. When the physical vulnerability inherent in becoming a mother gets downplayed across the political spectrum for different reasons, perhaps it's no wonder why Southern only gradually came to the grasp the practical value of some first wave feminist victories. Like, it doesn't though. Like, all right, okay, so this is this is a, I'm, I'm assuming it's a turf. She hasn't said anything like too crazy gender critical yet, but like the idea that the physical, I'm, I'm assuming by the way this is worded, she's saying that gender identity is causing the physical vulnerability of becoming a mother getting downplayed, which just isn't true. Like what, what? Like it's, it, this is, this is a perfect example of when people say like, oh, you know, oppression isn't pie. Like it's not like because somebody else gets a piece, you don't get any. That's just, that's not how it works. Like, do, do you think because people care about gender diverse people that they don't care about mothers now? What is, I don't, uh. Even though she was no longer a dead weight financially, her job failed to appease her husband. He kept demanding I contribute more financially, but then would chew me out whenever I would work. It didn't seem to matter what she did. He would just give me impossible tasks all day, tasks that I simply could not finish. It felt like he would almost send me on errands with the intent of having me fail. All of this Southern tells me was difficult to square with her religious belief. She would pray by his bed when he was angry with her. Fuck. Hoping that if she gave him grace one more time, he'd realize the depth of her love and be kinder. God damn. That is, like, this is, when people talk about religion as being just brainwashing, that's exactly what people are talking about. She thought, she told me, that as long as I put on the high heels and lipstick when my husband comes home, as long as I cook the best meal, as long as I'm always submissive and say, yes, sir, whenever you want, things will go fantastic. And if it's not fantastic, the listical version of traditionalism would just say she should make more effort. Fuck. It was, she says, an embarrassing wake-up call, finding myself consistently applying these rules and instructions I found on Twitter and then never getting the results they were supposed to get in the realm of relationships. 
It seems to me, I tell her, that condensing millennia of religious belief and real-world domestic praxis into viral memes has produced a right-wing gender ideology every bit as oversimplified, de dematerialized, and radically disconnected from the complexities of life as the disembodied left-wing version. Again, that's that's just, like, not... Tr like, do, do you think that gender, quote-unquote, gender ideology is... Like, I'm sorry, this is going to get me on an entirely different, different fucking tangent. <laughs> Um, that's just not true at all. That's just wild. In turn, both Southern and other women I spoke to within her wider underground railroad of ex-trad women think that, perhaps like its left-wing analog, the extremely online nature of this gender ideology attracts a higher than usual proportion of individuals with existing psychological issues. Man, like, you, they really can't just focus on how awful this right-wing shit is without being like, actually, then there's, there's also, uh, people on the left who are like they they have to like cram it into fitting in their narrative too because it, it doesn't directly align ellen not her real name is another previously m married erstwhile trad who is now in southern's network she describes how the men who self-select into these communities are often wayward antisocial disagreeable and very very misogynistic fucking shocker who who could have guessed who who would have predicted this from years and years of people like nick fuentes leading the, the incel movement. Frequently themselves from broken homes and with limited real world social support. And when their relationships go wrong, as they often do, the very online trad gender ideology has no remedy. If there's a problem due to the fact that he's crazy, violent, or hateful, Ellen says, that's just how it's supposed to be. There's nothing really done to fix it. Southern is careful to emphasize that she knows many traditionalists and happy, loving, com complimentary marriages, but she says it's a fallen world and her community includes many women whose husbands seem to have been drawn to listicle-style gender ideology precisely because of the power it offers over women. You think? Those guys want someone they feel they can definitely control, who's never going to leave them, who they can do anything to. In the end, it wasn't Southern who broke the spell, but her husband. Around the time her son was toddling, two family deaths prompted her to arrange a visit home to Canada. Her husband threatened to divorce her if she went, and Southern tells me she had to sign an affidavit promising to return. Finally, he relented, only to text after she landed in Canada, declaring that because she'd chosen to travel, the marriage was over. She moved in with her parents, then into the kind of affordable accommodation available to those on the breadline. In Canada's brutally expensive housing market, a cheap cabin surrounded by woodland and trailers. Even then, she still hoped her marriage could be saved. I still wanted to make it work. Girl! God, like, that's just brainwashing at that point. How- how- this is what happens when you don't have, like, a gay friend to talk to. This is what happens when you don't have, like, anybody to be like, Girl, you need to take a, a baseball bat to his tires. Nail baseball bat to his tires. I was texting my husband and calling him begging to get back together, but he said, No, I don't want even shared custody. What a piece of shit. The cabin, she said, had an ant infestation. Everyone used her washing machine because it was the only one, but she says it was unexpectedly healing and filled with a genuine sense of community. Still, it was a confusing time for her. My brain was breaking between two worlds because I couldn't let go of the ideology. I was at a similar age when I fell away from the radical left and the sense of disorientation she describes the familiar. God, stop trying to bring your own thing into it. It's not the same. Where I was free to grapple in private with my cognitive dissonance, Southern had built an international profile promoting this worldview. I had been banned from countries over this ideology, she says. I destroyed my reputation internationally for this. How am I going to let go of this? Like, I, I, I constantly wonder this kind of thing of, like, what if, like, this would never have, like, for, for a lot of these people, this would never happen. They have too much of a vested interest in maintaining their uh, beliefs and their base. But, like, one day, just for, just for shits and giggles, what if Nick Fuentes woke up and was like, you know what? I think I'm a communist. How do you go about, in, in this attention economy, how do you go about making that shift or, or like even would you probably not like and and nick fuentes would never by the way he's he's too pathetic and filled with hate um his inferiority complex wouldn't let him admit he was wrong but like fox bat yeah like it, it would take years and years of effort but but especially for people who are in a more public spotlight 
Every Manosphere talking point had turned out not to match her experience. It wasn't true that only women mess up relationships. Being submissive didn't fix everything. Yes, women mostly initiate divorce, but as she discovered, this can happen because a man wishes to avoid incurring child support liabilities. When she described her red pill conditioned ex expectations of divorce to her lawyer, the woman laughed at how mistaken she was. More than anything, though, what shattered the listicle mindset was simply realizing how much nicer life could be when you live the life that's in front of you rather than trying to follow rigid precepts. Despite not being the right-wing ideal of aristocracy and everyone going to mass, she realized she was infinitely happier there in that woodland among her working-class neighbors than she ever had been in her marriage. Quote, every single thing I was experiencing in my real realm, not online realm, was the complete opposite of what I was being told. Yeah, you fucking think? In Southern's view, the increasingly visible gulf between right-wing gender ideology and living in reality has an analog in the memes and talking points of the broader E-right, a phenomenon that, once again, is mirrored on the other side of the aisle. It's, but it's not, dude! Like, there, unless she's gonna try and say that, like, trans people are living in this fake reality and they're all miserable, which is like, dog, come on, you're, you're not gonna say that trans people are as miserable as people like this. I'm, I'm assuming she's going to try and say that. Here, viral and overly simplistic takes, uh, simplistic ideas replicate with seemingly very little reference to reality, human nature, or the world as it actually is. For example, she describes the repeal the 19th meme, which calls for ending women's right to vote as the right-wing version of defund the police. That is not fucking true at all. Again. Okay, one of those is taking away women's rights. Uh, another is asking for police reform. Like, like, defund the police doesn't mean you put every police person out of a job. It means you don't fucking militarize a police department. Like, those those are not equivalent at all. Southern thinks the internet's baked in incentives encouraged to drift towards more caricatured viral politics. For example, she tells me that where earlier generations of red pill content merely focused on exploiting women sexually, it has become just teaching men to hate women. That, again, like, always, kind of always has been. Uh, simply because it's a simpler, cheaper, and more viral message and therefore easier to sell. Someone less th online than Southern might reply, yes, but surely the error was disappearing into I online ideological rabbit holes in the first place and confusing memes for life principles. This is true, but so much of social life now happens online, including for children, that Southern is far from the only individual to have reached adulthood with a set of templates for life gleaned more from memes than real-world adult guidance. Nor is this a problem for just one side of the political aisle. Why, why do you keep saying that? <sighs> against an online world with entropic culture dissolving effects at this scale what is hope what hope is there for any of us a pessimist might say this future looks bleak for interpersonal relationships indeed for a public life toe court but i think southern story offers cause for optimism it suggests that maybe just maybe our current crop, crop of internet generated political derangements will turn out to be a temporary symptom driven by generations who grew up without the internet and hence without much psychological defense against its many pathologies with the wider world in flux it's hardly surprising to find ourselves here again the challenge is finding solutions that are grounded in reality rather than abstract purist ideologies but the internet's first generation of natives may be the ones who bring us back down to earth even the erstwhile queen bee of the extremely online right uh, is now convert to living in reality so perhaps there's hope for the rest of us and our politics will find a way back there in the end god that fucking sucks dude that was a bummer